Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you, we know that you alone are God. We come to you requesting that you will be with us, that your Holy Spirit would indeed guide and direct us. May your name be honored and glorified. May we come to you and recognize that indeed all the things happening now in this time, you indeed have already ordained it. You know it was going to happen and that we who are your followers need to understand and recognize that you alone are God. And you have never, you revealed your secrets to your servants, the prophets. Into your hands we place our meeting for tonight as we do this third sermon in the series. We ask that you will lead us, guide us, and direct us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome, welcome everyone as we dive into our third in our series of sermons. Indeed, God has called us at a time like this to examine his word and examine his truth and to know what will happen. And therefore, we give God thanks for all that will he will allow us to learn tonight. So we invite you to pray and seek and reach out tonight because tonight's topic may affect many of us and it will actually speak to where we are as a people and speak to happenings in our world today. We are looking at the second beast and it's our third in our series. We've we'll got the first beast. I identified that first beast as um, the Roman Catholic Church who sits on Rome, which is basically this, the major countries of Europe we identified the mark of the beast as Sunday, which Rome claimed to be their mark of authority, and therefore will compel the world to keep that day of rest. In fact, the Roman Catholic Church makes it very clear that there's no biblical evidence to keep Sunday holy. It's just by their own authority. And therefore, if persons are gonna logically be Protestants, and want to go back to Sola Scriptura, then they should be logically become Seventh-day Adventists. This is what they have said, recognizing that they don't need to hide the truth that what so many persons today keep as the holy day, which is Sunday for many, they have claimed it as not being biblical, but being by their own sense of their authority. And the entire world seems to have gone after this. The second beast, will now provide us with a means or a catalyst to revamp the first beast and to make an image to the beast and then make sure that all systems are governed by the first beast. And that's what we'll look at tonight as we focus on Revelation chapter 13 and what God has to say to us as his people. We're going to start off the reading about the second beast on verse 11, Revelation 13, verse 11. The Bible says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and he caused out the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he did great wonders, so that he make the fire come down from heaven out of on the earth in the sight of men. And he has seen for them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that it should make an image to the beast, which had a wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And no man might buy or sell save he had that mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, that in me that understanding count the number of the beast, but the number of a man, and his number is 666. Indeed, that number referred to identifying the first beast, to which the second beast shall be paid homage to. 
So we need to understand who is the second beast. We already know the first beast. We already know the mark of the beast. Now let's find out who will be the one to bring everything together and cause the world to go after the first beast. And therefore, we invite you to focus now on God's word. Bow your head once again as we pray. Lord, we ask for your leading. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your direction. We pray that your name will be honored and glorified. Into your hands, Lord, we place tonight. We place all those who are watching, even after this. We ask that indeed all of us will come to a saving relationship and a saving knowledge of you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so let's start off by going through a little bit of history. Many of you would have been very much aware of a particular um, holiday in America. And that is the Thanksgiving service, the Thanksgiving, day of Thanksgiving that they have uh, every year. And that day of Thanksgiving is because when Americans, what we now call Americans, they were Europeans, when the Europeans were fleeing Europe because of the tyranny of the rule of the Roman Catholic Church, when they were sailing across the sea just to escape uh, so that they can have the freedom to worship. And that's why the American Thanksgiving, they give God thanks so they have found a new land in which they can now be free to share and to grow and to develop. And hence these pilgrims that made it across the sea gave that grand holiday that Americans celebrate today, trying to escape the tyranny of the Roman Catholic Church in Europe that promulgated the dark ages. In fact, when they made their journey to the new world as they found it, it wasn't really new for, because there were Indians there, but they called it new, because it was new to them. When they made their way across to this new world, they decided that they would not repeat the same things that they saw from the old world that was run by the Catholic Church. And they gave God thanks that they could now worship God and read scripture and not have the burden of being killed for just owning a Bible. But if you see in this picture, they came with their guns. Yes, they came with their children, but they came with their guns. They came with their swords. And they came to, they, they had this thing, this fervor to conquer the new world, which they did. And I'll tell you more about that shortly. What they're running from, of course, was a tyranny that was in Europe. The Pope was in charge of the old world. And if you know anything about history, the Catholic Church had basically divided the, what was being discovered as a new world into two pieces. And they gave a, a piece to the Spanish and a piece to the Portuguese. And the other countries that made up Europe um, felt a little bit jealous. And of course, they went to make war that is why we have uh, the French and the British and the, the Dutch. They came into the Caribbean, the New World, and they also fought for territory. And then, of course, some territories were ceded over. But the Spanish and the Portuguese were the ones that controlled, dominated the world. Even to today, because of that influence, the Catholic Church on these two major countries, even today, a lot of Spanish persons still hold to Catholicity, they still believe in Catholic Church, and uh, they have homage to to the Virgin Mary. And you, even in Brazil and São Paulo, you will see these images that they picked uh, coming from this time. So what we have was that these individuals were trying to run from the tyranny, trying to find freedom, trying to escape persecution, trying to escape because these, these individuals were called heretics. Heretics because they believed in God. Heretics because they held on to God's word. Heretics because they preached the thus say the Lord. Heretics for wanting to, to, to serve God and, and be free to follow whatever the Bible says and not to listen to the Pope. They were captured, their lands were confiscated, they were killed, they were burned, they were fed to lion. And therefore, when they had the chance to escape to the new world, they gave God thanks. And that's where we come tonight. How does the USA, the great United States of America, fit into the Bible? 
How do they fit into the context of scripture? And what role will they play in the time of the end? You have on your screen now the constitution that was uh, delivered, that was delivered and signed. And uh, of course, we know that the Declaration of Independence and what was done was July 4, um, 1776. But two days before, a vote was made um, by the fledging 13 states, because America started with 13 states. They had a meeting and only 12 were present. And they were trying to decide whether or not to, to, to remain with Britain or to you know, become their own independent nation. And the delegate from Delaware came late because of a storm that was in his area. But when he finally came, he cast his vote for freedom and the liberty bells began to ring. And of course, they made a constitution, a Declaration of Independence that was published on July 4, which is what we consider to be American Independence Day. And that's where that day is so well celebrated. Now, if you can read the fine print, I want you to recognize the way America was formed. Um, section one of section two says, all of the powers here granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States and shall have consist of the Senate and the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives shall be composed of the members chosen every second year by the people of several states and the electors in the state shall have the qualification requisite for the electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislature. In other words, they form what is now known as the Electoral College. And those electors will select individuals who will represent that state but they have to do it based on the, the votes of the people in that state. But section one literally formed that they should have powers and these powers shall be granted to both the Congress and therefore shall also be granted to the Senate or the House of Representatives. So there are two things, the Senate and the House of Representatives and of course the Congress. America had a splitting of powers when they were formed. Now I want you to know that the American constitution does not grant freedom of worship. Neither does it grant the right to bear arms. Those two things that we hear banned about so much about America only happen because of an amendment. And therefore, the first amendment to the constitution that we have is that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Now, if you understand anything about countries or free countries, the constitution is hardly ever touched because for it to be touched or to be changed, it had to be ratified by a number of different levels for it to come back into law. So most countries do not touch the constitution because of what it would take to get that passed. But what they will do sometimes is make amendments to the constitution. And amendment number one is what many persons own when it comes onto America. The fact that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This is important because the pilgrims were running away from Europe that had a church in start of the state and all of the darkness that issued from that. And they, knowing that, when they got to America, decided that the Constitution must have an amendment that states that the Congress, the state, should stay far from religion. Religion should be free. How you want to exercise that freedom is up to you. If you want to worship God, then good. If you want to worship Buddha, that's good. If you want to worship Allah, that is okay. If you want to worship the devil, that is also fine. America decided that religion should be separated from the state. The state should govern in the best interest of all people, while religion will govern based on their own creeds or their own dogmas or whatever constitute, as long as they're not endangering the life and the rights and liberties of others. Here we find in Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with a certain and able rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you recognize that America, they try their best to stay very far from anything that will seem too Bible, but yet still they have some little Bible in it. So they use the word creator because 
They want to say that whoever the creator may be, whoever that creator may be to you, or if it may have been this or that, whoever the creator may be, we have these enable rights. Um, you see on their dollar in God we trust. And that God could be anything. They, they try their best not to define who the creator is or define who the God is. That is really up to the individual to choose, to decide who their God is, who their creator is. If your creator is evolution, then fine. That's the figure you want to hold on to, that's okay. But there's something else I want you to know about this particular quote. When this was first penned, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Well, you have to understand that at this time, not every man was equal. In fact, um, America at the time still had slavery and those who had slaves saw them as property, less than human. And therefore this was primarily targeted towards those who came from Europe, or Caucasians who came from Europe as they are equal, but it did not apply to those who came from Africa because those were slaves. There were animals to be traded. However, we hope and pray that the service between black and white, which is actually a phenomenon of modern times because in the past we have like Egypt and these ancient civilizations, they didn't have a race problem per se. The race problem is something that happened afterward and happened in our modern times with our enslavement of, of those persons of color from Africa. But this, we hope, would have been the ideal of America. You see, America has a lot of ideals that we, we tend to want to ascribe to. We, we tend to want to go and want to be and, and accept these ideals of freedom and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, you know, America is supposed to be the place of uh, greener pastures. But also, this America will not always be like this. And the amendments themselves will be removed. And they will somehow resemble the same things that the pilgrims were trying to avoid. You see, within scripture, we know that God respects human freedom. But there is a push in today's society we find it even here in Jamaica, we find it in America, we find it in Europe, we find it in a lot of other small islands. The, the, this need to restrict human freedom, to control what human beings believe and what human beings think and who human beings worship. There's a push now in this time, a heavy push for us to respect a particular way and a particular mode of thinking. And it's playing out over and over, over and over. People are saying we need to have more laws so that we can have a more upstanding society and those who believe in a particular system or a particular way. We will review this some more, but I want you to know that God always respects human freedom. If your choice to decide to worship God or not worship God, it's your choice whether or not you're going to hold on to God or not. It is your choice whether or not you're going to take the hand of God or not. It is your choice whether or not you want to, to worship him or worship the devil. It is really your choice. The only thing that you don't have a choice in is that when it comes down to your consequences of your action, then you have to bear those consequences. If you choose to worship God, then you bear the consequences of eternal life. That's a good thing, huh? But if you choose to reject God and hold to Satan, then you bear the consequence of that, which is eternal death, which is a bad thing. But God respects our choice to choose. God never forces. The devil forces. But God never, ever forces us. And therefore, he respects our right to choose. Book of Revelation speaks of the fact that there will be a major battle about that freedom. Revelation finally issues also and will always revolve around worship and freedom of conscience. Throughout scripture, the major item that is discussed is freedom. Freedom of worship. Who do you worship? That, my friend, has always been the focus of God's word. And we invite you to recognize that you must choose God. Choose him. John, on the Isle of Patmos, got a vision about our time, and he wrote it down. This book, Revelation, described the rise of the new world. Some would want to call it the new world order, but I'm not going to stick to the new world because the order will come afterward. The Bible speaks of the order, but it does speak about this new world that will happen. What does prophecy reveal? 
we go back to verse 13 and verse 11. And he beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The first beast, verse 13, came up out of the water, but the second beast came up out of the land. And that, my friend, is significant. Who is this second beast that will rise up out of the land, not out of the water like all the other beasts before it? Who is this beast that will come up and dominate and cause all to go back to the first beast? Well, clue number one, it will have to come up at the right time. You see, this beast had to make its journey at the correct time. The verse right before says this, Version 13, verse 10. He says, he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity, and he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. This verse tells us the end of the Roman Catholic dominance, when that beast would have been brought or paused and is at seem as if it would have died. But the Bible had already told us that his deadly wound would have been healed. He told us that in verse 3, and he would tell us again later on in this passage, that their deadly wound would have been healed. What's going to happen is that the Bible is setting up something for us. It says just around this time where this the, the Pope would have been captured and uh, led into captivity and then, of course, would have died the following year. Around this time, another beast will come up. So therefore, this beast, this nation, this kingdom must arise at a particular time, must wake up at a particular time, must come to the fore at a particular time. And therefore, this beast will rise up. Now, earlier I shared with you when I was dealing with the first beast and the time that it would govern, 42 months. And at 42 months, 42 months, but 30 days, so 42 times 30 gives us 1,260 days. The Bible says a day is for a year, so we got 1,260 years. We found the start of the first beast to be 538 AD when the French finally gave assent to the Pope to govern all of Europe. And in 1798, it came to an end when the French arrested the Pope, took him off his throne, put him in prison, and he died in 1799. And therefore, we now have the period of 1,260 years. The second beast will have to arise at the right time. Remember I said, verse three says, and I saw one of his heads and it had been, been mortally wounded, but of course it will be healed. If you look on the screen, you will see two major places. And if you know anything about these two places, you, should, you know, know the answer very quickly. On your left is the capital of America, Washington, DC. The design of their building is strategic. And on your right is St. Basilica, where Catholic Church headquarters is located, where the Pope dwells. And if you notice the similarity, the dome structure of these buildings, if you go anywhere in the States, you will find um, that all the capitals have the same structure design. And that was not by chance, it was by design. And I want you to start opening your eyes and start realizing that a lot of things have been etched into what we see and what we know. And we, we see and take it for granted, not knowing that it is there. Even the American dollar has certain things etched into it that speaks to what it's about and the culture that it would have and other issues that will come. But I'm gonna share that with you a little bit later. The second thing that needs to happen was that the Bible says it has to come up at the right place. Notice that the Bible says that it will come up out of the earth. Earlier I said that the first beast came up out of the water. Now, Revelation 17 verse 15 says, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are the peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. That means wherever the beast came out of water, they're coming out of a place that have many people, have multitudes, have nations, have tongues. This beast, the Bible says, will come up out of the earth, not out of the water. That means they will come up out of a place that does not have 
peoples that does not have multitudes, does not have nations, and does not have tongues. It's not saying that they will come from a place that doesn't have individuals dwelling there. They will just not be a populous nation. It will just not be several nations. And in fact, when the pilgrims journeyed to the new world, they found an unpopulated area. And it's out of that unpopulated area that America sprang forth. But if you know your history, if you know anything about the new world, if you know anything about uh, the part of the world that they claim that they discovered by coming to this side of the world, there were a people dwelling here. Indians were here. Indians were in America. Indians were in the Caribbean. Um, for Jamaica, we had the Tainos who are a migrant set of Indians that sail from island to island who enjoy peace and happiness until the Europeans came to their border. I know that for many, you'd have watched the cowboys and Indian shows, while at least for me, that's what I used to watch while I was growing up. And you saw these cowboys, these Europeans who would come with their guns and batter these vicious Indians and try and because the Indian wanted to kill them and scalp them and carry their scalp as trophies. The thing about that history is that is not really true. Even the history about Columbus is not true. I know that many of us were taught in school that Columbus has covered the new world, but that was not true. And what he did was horrible. Columbus was a murderer, a rapist. He did horrible, atrocious things to the Indians who were very much welcoming of these new people who came to their land. But they used that welcoming atmosphere and wage war on them. If you go to America now and look at the Indians who have their, what they call their reservations now, their settlement that they were kind of put in a little pen, if you want to call it that. Those Indians are not warlike and vicious and barbaric. You see, when America, when the Europeans landed on the shores, those pilgrims came on the shores with their guns and their swords, they found a people who were already here, a people who had already began to farm and take care, a people who understood the land that they were living on, and they wanted to seize those lands. And that's what they did. And they seized it and killed and made tyranny. That's how America, a, a state that was made by migrants, came to be because the true inhabitants of America, the true inhabitants of the new world were Indians. But they weren't a nation. They weren't nations. They weren't multitudes. They weren't peoples. They weren't tongues. It was just a group of, of individuals who lived off the land in harmony and in peace until America came. Until not America came, sorry, until the Europeans came and formed the United States of America. So here, is an exclude. It's depicted as a new nation. And this is important. You see, the Bible said it's another beast. And throughout scripture, we know that a beast represents a kingdom or a nation. We know that from Daniel chapter 7, that whenever we see a kingdom or, or whenever we see a beast, we should think of a nation. Daniel chapter 7, which had all the beasts, had the lion and had the beer and it had the, the leopard and a terrible beast, we found that in all those situations, those beasts that we saw were actual nations. The lion was Babylon, the, the bear was Media Persia, the, the leopard was Greece, and a terrible looking beast with iron teeth was Rome, which later had a little horn on the top that became um, Papal Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, that then ruled over that beast. Now, the first beast had horns with crowns, but the second beast does not have any crown. You see, go back to verse 1. We find it in verse 1. And the Bible says, And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, out of a multitude, out of nations, having seven heads. The seven heads here, just a reminder, are the seven nations of Europe. There were 10, because there were 10 horns, but the little horn of the Roman Catholic Church root up three. And therefore, those three, the Herodians, the Vestigots, and the Vestigots, they are no more. But the seven that remain are the ones that we know today as uh, the powerful nations. 
which are uh, Britain and Germany and uh, the Switzerland and the Portuguese and Spain and the French. These are the, the powerful ones that rule, seven heads. But Little Horn came up and root of three, and she rides on the beast, version 17. And therefore, on his arms were 10 crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. So horns that have crowns speak to kingly authority, speaks to royalty, speaks to monarchy, if you want to call it that. But this second beast does not have any crowns on its head, on its horns. No, no, no. Therefore, its horns are a symbol of power. Because these horns, they have no crown, they have no kingly authority, and this is contrast to the first beast that went before. So what are these horns that this beast have? Well, if you think about it, horns are power. And what power does America has? How does America display or preside over its power? Well, if we understand how America is situated, they have a separation between powers in America. Separation that was borne out between the legislative arm versus its own court system, the Supreme Court. That's one way we see these two horns separate. You see, the American system has a separation also of civil and religious liberty. And therefore, both of which are guaranteed uh, by the system of America. There's a separation between what is known as civil rights versus the liberty of religion in America. Therefore, if you want to be free to worship, the only place that used to guarantee that freedom was America. And therefore, had a separation of these two powers. We also have another separation between the Democrat and the Republican, the two system party that governs America and no other. People have tried their best to bring in another system, but it does not work. Of course, we have uh, the executive branch of government versus the branch of government to the point where the president, the, the president can make certain executive orders that are carried out, um, even without the support of the, the houses that govern America. So America has a separation of power, but there is no king. And that's why America is a republic. And as a republic, republics don't have kings. Jamaica is not a republic because Jamaica actually has a monarchy set above it. Trinidad and Tobago is a republic, and therefore it has no king above it. That's why the leader of Trinidad tends to be a president. And therefore, what we find is that this beast will have no kingly authority. There'll be a separation of power, religious and civil, separation in how the branches work, separation in how they govern. Therefore, this is important in our understanding. So the fifth clue says, it's a power, it's a worldwide power, worldwide influence. And he has all the power of the first beast before him, and he called it the earth, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So the entire earth will come to know and respect this beast. And this is pivotal in understanding the role of America in the end time. You see, persons have claimed that China is a superpower. And yes, they are a superpower. I believe that they are. But at what level will they be? And can they cause anything major to happen? I submit to you, though how powerful China may be, how they control the markets of the world, China is still not as powerful as America, and they will never be. You may say, but how is that possible? China is having the, the, ones, the one road the Silk Road, and they're doing all these things, they're cutting all these countries and placing their power of influence in so many countries. Of course, they will become great. And I have no problem with that idea. But the Bible does not speak to China. And I'll tell you why. Revelation 13, this second beast could never be China because China is a very, very, very old civilization. You see, the Chinese um, go way back and uh, 
I, I would dare say they are at least over 4,000 years old. Of course, they're older than that because we know the Chinese um, history that we have goes way back to the Ming Dynasty. It's a very, very old um, um, nation. This nation will have to come at a time that has been brand new. And therefore, China will not fit, fit into this prophecy at all. The other reason why China could not fit is because China is actually influenced by America. Yes, I know they are communists and they do their own thing and they have the party and they make their own rules, but China has heavily invested in America. Majority of the US debt, the trillions of debt that America puts out, China holds it. Yes, China holds the debt of the US. China has reserves of US currency. And the thing about having your reserve in another nation's dollar is that that nation controls that dollar. Now, for you who, for those of us who may not understand how the economies work and how things should be, normally a bank should have their currency backed up by a special entity that is independent of that country. In the past, the dollars for most countries were backed up by gold. And therefore you could use that dollar to reclaim that gold, buy that gold. It so happened that some economic trouble hit the world and America stepped in and decided that they will buy the gold from these nations and supply them with the means that they needed to survive. So America, got a lot of gold while other countries did not. And they ended up putting their dollar um, as the reserve for their country. This is significant, you know. Even Jamaica, we have our reserves in the US dollar. Therefore, you're putting your trust in another country's currency. And when you have time, just research it for yourself to understand the depths by which it goes. If you understand anything about the American dollar, it's not really owned by the American people. It's owned by the Federal Reserve. And they're the ones who dictate and govern what interest rates will be, what how much dollars they will produce, what the value would be in terms of controlling inflation rates and all these things. The Federal Reserve controls all of that, not the people of America. Unlike other countries like Jamaica where the dollar is owned by the people, it's not so for the Americans. And therefore, though China may be powerful, they have placed so much effort in the trillions that they own from America, the reserve that they own from America, is that they're easily, easily manangled when it comes down to that currency. That is why China is able to invest so much millions of US dollars in so many countries, because they own the debt. They have the, the reserve from America. But well, that, my friend, would fail. If you go again, American dollars is the only dollar that can be traded almost in almost any country. You can walk into a, into a store in Jamaica or into a fast food joint in Jamaica and pay in US dollars. You can walk into a hotel and do so, but there's no way you can walk into any store in America and pay in Jamaican dollars. It's just not possible. You have to convert that money. And it happens even for the, the pound sterling. When they had the euro, the euro was trying to solve that issue and try and have a currency that the European Union will have that will be as powerful, that could rival the US dollar. But with the collapse of Europe because of the exit of Britain, that may not be the case anymore. And the Euro will not be as strong as they hoped to be because America is the new nation that should cause the earth and them that dwell therein to go after the first piece. And it's important that they have that control. So the country of Europe cannot fit because they're old countries. China can't fit because it's an ancient country. Therefore, the only country that has that kind of worldwide power and dominance that came up and is young, because America is a very young country, but it has tremendous amount of power, would be the United States of America. Clue number six, change in character from the lamb to the dragon. Now, I want you to understand that the Bible said it's gonna be a lamb like beast, you know, a lamb, horns like a lamb, but they'll speak like a dragon. Speaking like a dragon is, if you know the dragon, dragon is devil, old serpent, not Lucifer. Speak like a dragon means that indeed you think you have the liberty and peace, but if you go against 
America, you'll be in trouble. And we find that over and over and over. For us in Jamaica, a little bit subtle, like um, they don't like a policy of the government so they take away their visa so they can't travel. So subtle little things like that to say, hey, we're still in charge. We, 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 are, the, we are the ones that, that rule. But they have even greater power, such as making war with nations, nations that are not affecting them in any way or form, nations that are not fighting against them, but they want to control that nation. Let's take um, Cuba, for instance. Cuba has been on an embargo. For what reason? Cuba has not waged war with America. Cuba has not sent anything to America to destroy them. The Cubans are not making missiles and weapons of mass destruction, but yet still there's an embargo against them. Why? Because the Cuban regime decided that they will not in any way allow another country to dictate the way they run or operate. Cuba has uh, the highest per capita of doctors of any nation in the world. They have these specialities in medicine that is extremely great, but yet still they have an embargo against them. They can't even import things freely into their country. And you have to really wonder, why is it that this nation that is so peaceful that everybody wants to run to, that everybody wants to be at, the land that is green and fair and prosperous and liberty reigns, why they will have such a stringent thing against other countries that do not subscribe to their way? Yes, Cuba is a communist country, and communism is a, a bad thing if you're in a democratic society. And that is, I can understand that reason, because all of us want freedom and liberty. And that is true. I can understand that need. But the facts still remain that America tends to speak like a dragon whenever somebody goes against their will. When the UN wanted to challenge um, the 45th president, concerning his declaration about Israel and Jerusalem. He made it very clear through his ambassador that, hey, we have the money, we're the ones funding you. And if you speak too hard, we're gonna take away our money from you. That was dragon spoil. It wasn't diplomacy of saying, okay, let me see if we can reason and bargain and argue. No, it was simple straight up. If you don't do what we say, we will not fund you. That's it, we are in charge. That's the kind of nature of America. They speak like a dragon. And this is important because this is how they will make sure the world go back after the beast. So how does a nation speak? A nation speaks through its laws, this a body. And that's how Americans speak through their laws. And a lot of laws are passed, but America, much of America doesn't even know. There's something to understand about how America works and how they're structured. Um, when they had the Patriotic Act, that was after 9-11, uh, the whole idea that terrorists came and got control of a plane and went into a building, and that plane blew up and blew up that building and came on the other side with his nose, which does not really make sense, but that's for another discussion altogether. When they had that 9-11 Act and Americans died, they brought a Patriotic Act that many, even in Congress, did not even read. And a lot of Americans, in fact, Americans lost a lot of their rights because up until this point, they, you could, your rights as an American citizen was protected. You could, you, could, you could only be infringed if the courts ruled a particular way. But the Patriot Act allowed many rights to be taken away. Um, allowed, um, of course, we had a whistleblower that said that they were monitoring the phone calls and the messages of individuals without a court order that came out. We also know that soldiers were allowed to be deployed on the, the land of America, not in war, which was against how America was designed because soldiers could only fight on the, the territory or the landmass of America if they were at war with another country and being invaded. But otherwise than that, the soldiers should not play any role in American um, rule or policy or anything like that should fight overseas. The Patriot had came in and changed a lot of things to go a lot of freedoms, what many persons did not realize was going on. So a nation speaks with laws and legislative bodies. We also find that a lot of distractions happen in America that keep people from not recognizing what laws are being changed. And a lot of laws were changed recently that many didn't even know was being changed because they were distracted with the theater 
that was the 45th president. While laws were being made and passed, going under the radar, things were being changed. And we didn't even know that they were being changed. One of those things that happened in this period that was being changed was America had this thing where um, churches should not support, churches could not support um, religious bodies. They could not become lobbyists. The church should remain church and the state should remain state and it should be separate. And a change was being made to allow the churches to be financial contributors to certain presidential candidates. Therefore, acting or behaving like lobbyists. That law was manangled in this time, but it wasn't given much clout or, or, or limelight because other theatrics would happen at the time. And people like theater, people like the drama, people like the jokes and the confusion that they didn't recognize that certain things were being changed. The 45th actually surrounded himself with a lot of um, evangelicals to help guide him. And uh, you will find that these evangelicals, though they knew that the president would have been lying or is lying, they supported him nonetheless because he supported their agenda. You have to ask yourself, what would these so-called Christian evangelicals, what agenda that they would have that will cause them to even turn a blind eye to some of the things that they saw and heard and the lies that were spoken. Their agenda must have been bigger, bigger than even the word of God and what God's word has to say. So written 13 verse 12 says, it says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the beast who was deadly wound was healed. How did America cause the world to go back after the beast? Now, I told a story about how America came to be and the Thanksgiving that they have every year for a reason. Because if you're born, if your nation is born out of oppression, if your nation was born out of trying to escape, listen to this now, if your nation was born out of trying to escape the tyranny of church, being charged of state, then how is it if knowing that tyranny, knowing how bad it was, how would you cause the world to go back after the first beast? How would that happen? How would the healing that that happen? What would America do to ex exercise all the power of the first beast? The, per the first beast was a masterful beast. If you didn't do what they said, what the church said, you would have been killed. If you didn't act the way they wanted, you would have been exiled. If you didn't do what they say, you would have been in trouble. The first piece was a tyrant of a leader. And America would exercise all the power of the first piece, would do the same exact thing. You know, he was given power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast to be killed. The first beast was very clear. If you did not give them homage, if you did not respect their right, that they stand between man and God, and that God has to listen to what they say and do what they say, because they hold the place of God on earth, you would be killed. And America exercised the same power. Well, how would they cause the world to go back after the first beast? How would they cause the entire world to wander after the first beast? Well, my friends, how does the world learn anything? You see, I always contemplate the fact that America is different. When it comes on to advancement in technologies and developments, and issues and stuff, it happens in other countries, but America seems to have a finesse in certain relations. And one of the things that America actually came up with is the moving picture. All right, so we had still photography, and then they had an idea to put those still photography in order to create a moving picture, which became our movie. And they used a particular thing in their movies. Almost every time you watch, 
um, anybody doing good, it would be the Catholic Church. It would be the nuns who are doing good. Whenever you had any demons to be exercised, it would be, of course, um, the nuns who will, or the priests who will do the excision. You, you know those horror movies and those films. They did it for a reason because they want to implant in the minds of people that the beasts, the ones who the pilgrim were running from, the ones who the people were trying to escape, they were nice people, they were good people, they were excellent people. And they kept on showing this image over and over and over and over again until people forgot the reason why the pilgrims came to America in the first place. One of my favorite movies um, when I was young, I watched it several times, though it's very long. My family used to have the actual video cassette, the VHS. So those who are old, I know you may not know what VHS is, but we used to have the VHS tape of the Sounds of Music. Wonderful rendition, beautiful movie. And in that movie, we find that the Von Trapp family, um, when they were trying to escape the tyranny of the Nazis, the movie depicted that the Roman Catholic Church was the one that helped them, that saved them, that protected them to allow them to escape. That movie was one of the most powerful movies when it was first made. And it gave people a picture that the Catholic Church was a savior of individuals. But if you go back into the history of it all, the Catholic Church was the other partner to the Nazis. They were the only church that was allowed to be open. They were the only orthodox building that was left standing. Everybody else was closed because the Nazis was almost a communist regime, if not a communist regime, one reader, ruler, a dictator that said everything. And he only allowed one church to be open. That's kind of church. Go into your history because sometimes what happens is that what we see on TV gives us an image or a portrayal that is not true. And you find that throughout all of these movies and shows and, and stuff that we have, the Catholic Church is portrayed as being the savior, the helpers, the ones who care. And that has been the image that has been portrayed and hence why the world will wander after the first beast. There's something that's striking that happened um, when the world found out the atrocities done by the, uh, by the Catholic Church when they were raping um, little boys, the altar boys, and doing immense abuse to these young boys, and of course the nuns also, but the young boys especially, what the world did, the world did nothing. There was a, a little outcry, but it was small. Not like any other individual or any other person um, would have gone down that road, then America would be in uproar. And I'm, and I'm trying to show you that somehow something has happened to the, to the psyche and the understanding of individuals to the point where they don't even recognize that they have been shown pictures after pictures after pictures that even when atrocities are shown or spoken of, then they, they you know, the 44th president made a statement that um, more persons have been killed um, in the name of Christianity than have been killed by even the revolt of the Muslims and other things. And when he said it, he was taking it to task. He was, he was, people were livid at his statements, but he was correct. More persons were killed in the name of God than was killed even in the world wars. Because the thing is that religion seems to be very emotive and persons tend to want to kill for what they believe in. America now is being propelled because of what they believed in and they're willing to storm the capital for what they believe in, even if what they believe in is a lie. You have to understand that images, pictures, movies have somehow caused the world to wander after the first beast. So hence, the Bible predicts an erosion of our freedoms when church and state will unite. Images of the beast will be made according to the Bible. Let me just make sure that you understand where I'm going with this. I'm gonna read the text for you again. It's not on the screen. Revelation 13, verse 15. Listen to what the Bible says. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast 
that the image of the beast should both speak and call that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You have to understand that America will make a likeness to the first beast, an image to the first beast. And how do we see that likeness and that image? How do we see that coming to fruition? Well, the fact is that there is a movement in America that resembles and speak and act just like the first piece. There is a movement, there's a, a group of Christians who have no regard for the Bible and what the Bible says, but they still call themselves church. There's a group of people who the leaders are the ones that the people listen to, but they don't listen to the Bible. And they may take little lines, little nuggets of the Bible and pull them out, but they speak in such nice terminology and fluency that, you know, if you come to the Lord and you give your money, you will, you will be prosperous and you will not be sick and stuff like that. They have these nice little things that they do, the image of the beast. And of course, they will keep Sunday. In fact, the Catholic Church, which is the first beast version 13, makes it very clear that everybody who follows them, who keeps Sunday holy, are their daughters. Because they're following them and not scripture, not the thus say the Lord. And people will try to defend it and say, oh, no, I, be, I go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. That, my friend, is a flat out lie because nowhere in scripture are we called to go to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. In fact, Christ, before his death, made it very clear that he wanted one thing for us to remember his resurrection by, and that would have been the communion service. And if you read through the Bible, communion service commemorates his death, his burial, and resurrection, and that is why we have that service instilled. The baptismal service also speaks to that also. Nowhere in scripture are we asked to commemorate the resurrection by keeping a day holy. The Sabbath was still binding. The Sabbath was kept throughout all of scripture. The Sabbath was kept throughout from the beginning of time to the end of time. The Sabbath was kept. Sunday only became a part of the Christian church in the era of compromise, in the era of apostasy, and now the entire world wanders after the beast, takes on the image of the beast, and seek to influence the state to make laws concerning their religion. That is why the 45th surround himself with all these Sunday church pastors. You see, there is a push to unite the church and the state. So how will this occur? You say as well, remember that a nation always speaks through its laws. And if the state if the lesser body is going wrong, then you would hope that the Supreme Court, a separate body, would make a rule in their fears and correctly. But here is the problem that we are, we are faced with even in our time today. Here's the problem that we have. The Supreme Court of America is made up of two groups of people, Catholics and Jews. And that's the structure of it right now. If you saw how quickly they pushed through their last nominee the other um, last year, quickly pushed through because that person had an agenda to fulfill. And even when she was questioned on her agenda, she waffled and kind of baffled and said, you know, I'm gonna try and rule for the best of the people. But you have to understand that something has gone wrong with the Supreme Court. This is Chief Justice William Rehnquist. He's no longer Chief Justice. He, um, he's no longer on the scene. This is what he said when he was in charge of the Supreme Court. He said, the war of separation between church and state is a metaphor, listen to his words, a learned man based on bad history. This learned individual has it wrong. It was not a metaphor. It's the reality. And it wasn't based on bad history. It was real history. The pilgrims experienced that history. And that is why 
they, they, they made it very clear that church and state should be separate. Two separate powers, two separate horns. They should not come together. That separation of church and state was important to them. But here, he's claiming that it was based on what is, what is this called? Bad history, a metaphor based on bad history. This, my friend, is not true. This wasn't bad history. This was how it was. But let me continue to what to say, what this chief justice had to say. He said a metaphor which has proved useless as a guiding, a guide to judging. In other words, he doesn't believe he being a Catholic, of course, does not believe that they should have any decision. They should allow their faith to, to influence how they will rule, how they will judge. Then he said, it should be frankly and explicitly abandoned. Now, if the leader of the Supreme Court is saying that church and state should not remain separate, they should be united, then something is wrong. Because how would one judge? How would one rule? You see, according to the St. Louis Dispatch, October 29, um, 1991, the wall separation at the second, sorry, at the second century of the Bill of Rights draws to a close. The Supreme Court is redefining what religious liberty will mean in the third century. What's that redefinition? Here it is. Broadly, the court's new approach helps conventional religions while hurting unconventional ones. It's clear that the Supreme Court is going down a path that will allow conventional religions to reign supreme while hurting the unconventional ones. And you must ask yourself, what is considered conventional religions? Conventional religions are Catholic Church, are the ones that came from her that are conventional, meaning that they keep Sunday holy. And of course, with her, the unconventional ones that decide that they want to keep the Sabbath holy. And of course, others that are unconventional. So what would this unit of church say? What will propel? People have asked uh, whether or not coronavirus is uh, one of those things that will propel um, the new world order. Here is where I draw my line. I believe that the dragon, that old serpent, that devil, Lucifer, who has given his power to the beasts, will use everything in his arsenal to bring about this end. He will use this pandemic. In fact, there have been utterances already. This pandemic shut down the world and the, the earth had a time to rest. And the earth had a time to heal, and the earth had a time to, to, to breathe. And therefore, because we care for the planet Earth, uh, we need to make sure that when things get back to normal, there is a day when the earth can rest. And they're saying that that day, conventionally, should be Sunday. A day you can go to church, or a day you can stay home. A day that should be left without nobody having to work, a day that should be sacred to all to allow the earth to rest. The devil will use anything. He will use uh, um, anything that can happen, our system of tracking, uh, or our satellites, the, our phones that have GPS on them, our cars that are filled with these devices also, um, credit card systems and, and cashless systems and, 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 and online systems like Bitcoins. He's gonna use all these things in order to bring about its end. So what will lead up to the union of church and state? Well, well, the Bible says, and he does great wonders so that he may fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which you have power to do in the sight of the beasts. Now, for me, my sanctified imagination was triggered by the story of a young girl. And that young girl was in the Iraq war and America 
um, had these special planes that would bomb them from the sky, some stealth aircraft that you didn't see, you didn't hear, you couldn't pick up, but then they would bomb. The little girl in the end of the description, and I think it was on Al Jazeera TV or BBC, she was describing her, her fear about a cloudless sky. She says she would not play when the sky is clear. She'd only play when the sky is overcast and cloudy. And uh, the reporter was trying to find out from her why. And she said, when the sky is clear, fire will come down from the heaven. The fire she was referring to that came down from the heaven were these bombs that were being dropped. And she said, you would just hear a, a, a sound and then there will be fire everywhere. That's her description as a child. And when she said it, my mind went back to this verse. You see, America is powerful and they have a, a mighty army and their military might is strong. They have spent so much investing in their armies. That is great. And indeed, they will cause fire to come from heaven. And they have done so in the sight of men. But also I believe that they'll be able to do certain miracles and they will have power to do these miracles in the sight of the beast. America would have many manifest, manifestations of things and stories and stuff that would cause persons to, to go after the beast. You see, America is, is a nation that does their thing in a, a way that will lead people to accept a lifestyle even if they don't want to. And I tell people all the time, when you look at it, there are individuals who, because of how things are, there are individuals who will willing to give up the Lord, willing to give up the Bible, willing to give up their Sabbath, just so they could go to school, just so they could go to work, just so they could earn a living. People are willing to do anything for them to be prosperous. And you see, because America is the land of the free, the home of the brave, the land of prosperity. Persons will run to and gravitate, not understanding that America, yes, may be a nice place to live and to grow and because you have all these freedoms, but that same America, because of all the things that they're able to do, will also speak like a dragon and cause the world to go after the first beast. Revelation 16 verse 14 says this, I want to say something right after this that I wish you would research on your own. But I'm going to say it anyway so you can understand why it's important. I mean, 16 verse 14 says, For they are the spirits of devils who work in miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You see, the devils, the devils, the demons, work miracles. Earlier I said to you that all of the buildings, the Capitol buildings in America are designed the same way. And they all have a group of persons who built them. They all have this, 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 this secret society that governs America. A lot of decisions are made in these secret societies that affect the populace. The populace don't even know they're being affected. And a lot of the practice and the rituals of these secret societies involve well, spiritism. And spiritism is divination or the use of demons to accomplish certain things and ideals. It is even steep in the songs that Americans sing. I remember last time I mentioned to you how Oh, Beyonce will say, let me see your halo. She's actually saying, let me see the sun got over your head. But there are other artists who makes it very clear that what's driving them are actually demons also that helps to inspire them. Beyonce has said it, um, uh, Nicki Minaj has said it, and others have said it. Recently, uh, one of the rappers who died, um, DMX, used to say that every single album that he sent out had to go out with his own personal demons. You see, America is filled with this demon spirit and spirits of demons that work in miracles. And sometimes those miracles may be very subtle. Sometimes those miracles are just the fact that people get rich quickly. They amass millions quickly. 
miracles that we and we sit and we stand in and we're in awe of these people, how they have this wealth and how they live in these mansions and how they are able to buy these clothes and drive these fancy cars. Oh man, I wish, I wish I could, I wish I could. That wish I could is wishful for these miracles that these devils are working. And that is why you should not, the Bible said we should not covet our neighbor's goods because the truth Truth is we don't even know how they got those things. We don't know how they had to sell their souls to the devils in order for them to have these miracles being done in their lives. That's why I believe strongly that we must stick to the word of God. You see, the Bible says in the verse 19, verse 20, the Bible says, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophets who wrought miracles before him, which with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These boys were cast alive into the lake of fire and brimstone. I want you to know something between this verse. And I want you to go back to your Bible. I told you to have your Bibles out. And I want you to, I want you to show you something. I want you to show you something between this verse and Revelation 13 and what was said there. Now, I want you to go there, Revelation 16. Revelation 13, verse 16. You want to compare with this verse. So I hope you have your Bibles out. It says, and he called it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And no man might buy or sell, save they that had the mark of the beast, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Three things were done here by America. Three things would have been propelled the entire world to enact this law. Notice at the end of time how Verse 19, verse 20, will predict the final moments. Notice that it says, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. Notice that with this, the name of the beast, the number of his name was mentioned, and of course, America will cause those to make an image of the beast to bow down and worship. That's verse 13. Notice that the idea of the beast himself was taken to the very first part of this verse. The number of his name. That was before. So notice the beast was taken. And what was left when the beast was taken was the fact that the mark of the beast or the mark of the authority of the beast, those who were received it and deceived into receiving it. They were deceived to receive the mark. Why? Because they had to work. They, they, they saw the money. They had to do this. So they were deceived to receive the mark of the beast. And also, some were not deceived. Some of them just simply worshipped his image. Some of them actually was wanting this to happen. And you see, in the end of time, the beast... Those who received the mark, those that were deceived, those who watched the image of the beast, they shall be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. This, my friends, is the second death. The first death is not that important because all of us will sleep and we wake up again, whether it's unto life or damnation. But the second death is the one that is final. And therefore, all those who are part of the first beast relation, those who worship the image of the beast and those who have the mark of the beast, they shall be cast into the lake of fire. Why? Because they allow themselves to be deceived by the false prophets who wrought miracles. And a lot of false prophets do work miracles. You find that many persons watch TV and they watch these um, evangelists and how they're working miracles and they see these things on TV and they, they flock them and they want the oil of this and the water from that and the rose from wherever and they go for these miracles only to be deceived so they could receive the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, the authority of the beast, the one thing that sets the first beast different from all others but they made a law that did worship and that is Sunday. Sunday is not biblical. Sunday was from the first beast and of that beast claims it as their mark of authority. And many shall be deceived to receive it by miracles and worship that beast. You see, Jesus predicted a period of extreme uncertainty and insecurity before his return. 
He says, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Yes, there will be wars and there will be earthquakes in various places. Yes, there will be plenty of earthquakes and, and, and volcanoes shall erupt and famines shall come. Definitely famines will be here and pestilences. Yes, there shall be diseases and diseases shall come back and things that we thought were gone will resurge again. We will have, we had um, SARS with COVID, coronavirus, and that was years ago. I know it's back again in a mightier way, and the entire world is now in frantic and in fear. We have nothing to fear unless we forget the way God has led us in the past, quoting NNG White. But before all these, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. They will lay hands on persecutors. You know why? You know why they're gonna persecute God's people? They're gonna blame God's people for all the calamities that are happening. They're gonna start saying, if they call these people, do not follow what we say and do not follow what we believe and follow what we teach. We're gonna make a law so they cannot buy nor sell unless they accept it. And because they are not accepting it, God is not punishing us, so let's be punished them. Let's kill them. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ prophesied that this will happen. Yes, there will be wars and the war. Yes, there are pestilence. Yes, there will be famine. These things are going to happen, but they will persecute us because of all this. You have to understand that everything will be used to bring life to an end. Could it be that a return to God, coerced by religious legislation, will be seen as a the answer to the waning moral values, the economic collapse, and the natural disasters. Now, all three things are being spoken about now. All three things are being warranted now. The current Pope, Pope Francis, has made it very clear that the moral values uh, that have that's weighing, that has destroyed, that people are now doing whatever they want to do and living how they want to live and having the life that they want to have. Indeed, the moral values have gone down so bad. And indeed, the moral values are waning and we need to get back to have some values. How can we have people choosing to, to, to to abort their unborn child? How can we have people choosing to, to be with the same sex? How can we have people choosing to, to behave and to act in a manner? How can we have all these things? We need to put laws in place to make sure that people don't have the freedom to sin. I'm telling you on the authority of God's word that God gave us the right to choose to sin or choose him. That has been the right that God has given us. And no human being should take the right that God has given us away from us. People must have that right to choose to worship God, to love God, to serve God. The people must have that right. And no state, no state should be brought to bear or asked to bear or caused to bear on the people to let them make a moral choice. A state should only protect the right of its citizens, protect the right of each citizen. And a citizen has the right to make a moral decision, whether for God or against God, because that is their God-given right. But now this is being used to say why we need to have church involved in state. Economic collapse, that also has been touted saying that if we were a Christian society, if we were allowed to have the church in rulership, then this discrepancy between the rich and the poor and this thing where people are callous in the way they do business and causing economic e economists to crash and to win and to fall, if only they had a, the moral compass of the church to guide them, it would not happen. That is being said now, but that my friend is also false because when the church was in charge in the dark 
ages, the Catholic Church became rich, rich, wealthy from the people, but the people became poor. Economic collapse cannot be solved by allowing the church to be in charge. And then you're gonna say, oh, natural disasters are happening because the earth has wax old like a garment because the actions of man has been, uh, has been to destroy God's creation. And we need to have a day of rest for the planet so the planet can heal so that we don't have these natural disasters. That is being said also, but that my friend is also false. It's also a lie. It's being used to bring about an end that does not fit into God's biblical motif. So it will happen that these things will be said. These things will be done, but this is not the will of God. God never forces anyone to choose him. Economical Collapse does not happen because people are greedy. Yes, they're greedy, but the church was also greedy. That's what's not happening, yes, because the Bible says that they will happen and they will increase even more at the end of time. The answer is not to put the state in the hands of the church because that will always lead to persecution. But some of you may be watching saying, but hold on, Pastor. Hold on, Pastor Douglas. What if? What if, what if you put the state in the hands of a good church? What if you put the state in the hands of a seven-day Adventist church that believes in the Bible and believes in God and doesn't have all these false teaching? What if you put the church, the state in the hand of the Adventist church? Wouldn't that be a good thing? My answer to you is no, it will not be a good thing. I would never want to see the Adventist church in charge of any government. Never, ever, ever, because the same persecution that avail whenever a church is in charge of a state will happen even if the Adventist church is in charge of a state. The thing is that church should remain church and state should remain step state and the two should not mix. Never should the two mix. Well, whenever they are mixed and the church become in charge, persecution always happens. Always happens. But it's being pushed now. It's being pushed to have this done so that people can now have the mark of the beast, the authority of the beast. They will lay their hands and they will seek to persecute seek to persecute and deliver you up because of these things. You see, if Christians, Liberty Magazine, um, 1980, it says, if Christians unite, we can do anything. We can pass any law or any amendment. That's exactly what we intend to do. You have to understand that there is an agenda by the false prophets in America to change the laws of America to bring an end to the liberty and the freedom that is enjoyed by so many now because they want to bring in the Sunday law. They want to enact the law where Sunday is sacred and they want to make sure that everybody has to do it under the binding fact of the law. And if you don't do it, you cannot buy nor sell. You can't do anything. You'll be killed if you go in. This, my friends, is the push of the Christians in America. Because this is what a very famous, famous evangelical pastor, tele-evangelist said. He says, the next obligation that a citizen of God's world order owes to himself is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Let me pause right there, because that, that line is also in the Catholic Tenth Commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, but it stops there. It does not mention the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And Pat Roberts, when he wrote this, the Sabbath to him was not the seventh day of the week that God has ordained. Sabbath to him was Sunday, based on the transference of the solemnity from the seventh day of the week to, to the first day of the week by the Roman Catholic Church. So when he says this, he's speaking of Sunday. 
He then says, it's a command for the personal benefit of each citizen, whether or not you believe in God or not. Sunday sacredness is for your benefit, he says. Higher civilization rise where people can rest and draw inspiration from God. Laws in America that mandate a day of rest have been nullified. That means they are there, but have been nullified as a violation of separation of church and state. So he's saying church and state separation is based on the fact that America does not mandate a day of rest. And he's saying that until it has to be, that difference has to come where the church and the state can be united again. He says, and an outright insult to God and his plan. This is not an insult to God. God has given us the freedom to choose him. And his plan is the plan of salvation to all those who believe, to all those who accept him. That is what God says. But he, Pat Roberts, says something else as an outright insult to God and his plan. Only those policies that can be shown to have clearly secular purposes are recognized. Pat Roberts, the new world order. You see, he wanted the new world order in his time. It didn't happen. And now he is seeking to make sure that all those who follow after him will also seek to do the very same thing and to have their new world order. It is happening, my friends. You see, but we have a message from God brought to us by the angels, the three angels messages, which the Adventist church must proclaim mightily even now. The Bible says, and I saw another angel mm, flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Mm. To dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, what? Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountain of waters. We must proclaim the first message, the second message, the third message of Revelation chapter four. We have to proclaim it because the world needs to understand that the system of false worship, the system of false belief, the system of Babylon, the great, the harlot must be shown up so that people can make a decision between following and serving God and worshiping him and keeping his commandments or choose to accept the mark of the beast. We cannot keep silent. We have to proclaim the truth of God's word. The issue revolves around worship. Worship the creator or worship the beast. That's the issue. America will play the role. It makes sure all the world wander after the first beast. America will play the role by having Christians who reflect the image of the beast, Christians who hold to the Sunday worship. They will proclaim and propel themselves to be in government and try and change the system to allow the amalgamation of church and state and the institution and the reinstitution of Sunday as a sacred day of worship. It will happen because so many things now Things in nature, moral decay, and, and pestilence and diseases, uh, and all these things I know somehow work in its way to make sure that when it happens, it will be accepted. The Patriotic Act was not read, the Patriotic Act was not read, but was accepted by the lawmakers without reading it. Why? Because they had 9 11 backdrop behind them. They quickly passed the law. You have to understand that within this time, things are going to happen and laws are going to be changed. Amendments are going to be made without even reading the fine print. And if the church keeps silent, we'll be in trouble. That is why tonight, today I present to you on the authority of God's word that we only have Two choices. Either we worship the creator or we worship the beast. 
either we keep the day the creator has made the seventh day of the week or we keep the day that the beast has made Sunday worship the choice is clear the issue revolves around the authority of God's word loyalty to Christ and obedience to his commandments like Peter, we must be able to declare on the authority of God's word, I rather obey God than man. You see, when people ask me what a saint is, and I'm going to try and wrap up and close with this, but when people talk about sainthood, uh, who's a saint and what a saint is, and, and, and try to church have to work miracles to be a saint, I don't believe that. I believe what the Bible says. The Bible says a saint, here is the place of the saints. Who are the saints? Here are those who will keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Verse 14, verse 12. A saint in the eyes of God has faith in Jesus and the saint in the eyes of God keeps his commandments. That's who a saint is. And if we want to be a part of God's family, if we're going to be God's children, if we're going to be a part of God's fold, if we're going to be a part of God's church, we must keep his commandments. We must have faith in him. We must reject the, the heresies and the apostasy of the beast, uh, reject the mark and the sign of his authority, which is thunder worship, and embrace the authority of God. We must reject the beast, whether the first beast or the second beast that shall make all world wonder after the first beast. We must reject the image of the beast and hold on to God, unchanging hand and unchanging word. When God gave Moses the commandments, he wrote it with his own fingers for a reason. And in that commandment, number four, he begs us to remember because he knows that in the end of time, there will be a push to forget. Indeed, when Israel was carted off to Babylon, Daniel explained to the king the dream that he saw of Ed of Gold, which was Babylon, chest of silver, which was Media, Persia, the, the thighs of brass, which was Greece, and the legs of iron, which was Roman, the feet of Anna K, which was uh, the, the world, Europe, and the, the ten nations that came from it with the ten toes. When Daniel explained this to the king, he decided that he wanted to make sure that he was everything. The coming Christ is similar to what happened in the days of Daniel. The Babylonian king, powerful world leader, accepts a counterfeit image and compel worship, contrary to God's command. He says, when you hear the sound of the salt of the heart and the music start to play, you must bow down and worship his image. But indeed, indeed, Daniel friend, we don't know what Daniel was. He may have been sent off on a very long errand. But Daniel friend, the three human boys, uh, when they heard the sound, they did not bow. They did not bow the knee. They stood up for God. This is what the Bible says. Now, in, if you hear, you're ready. I had a time you hear the son of the horn, the flute and the harp and the lyre and the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music. You fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately in the midst of the burning fire furnace. The three-year boy says, if it be so, hmm, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The three Hebrew boys made a stand that they will not worship that image. They shall not worship it. They shall not bow down to it. They are not going to renege on their faith in God because God will deliver them. Even if they have to be burned alive, they did not care because they stood up for God. They were thrown in the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar saw a fort in that fire, whom he said must have been the son of God. They came out and they was not burned. They were delivered. Soon and very soon, our historic freedoms will be challenged. America will make it very clear that it will be challenged. And all countries would have to fall in line. America. 
America has made sure that countries that were adherent or countries that were fighting them or countries that didn't follow their rule, they have made sure to seize power in those countries by making sure that there was unrest, civil unrest. And if not civil unrest, they went to their to make war with them directly, just to make sure that they have control over those countries. It has happened in the past, and it's happened now. You know, one of the states of America, Hawaii, was an independent nation. At the time that they had a female as the head of state in Hawaii, America launched an attack. They sent ships, battleships to Hawaii, and they seized the land from the people who were there, seized it from them, and then made Hawaii a territory of America, and then later into a state. America normally goes after whatever it wants. You can go after it peacefully, I can go after it in anarchy or war. Soon, our freedoms will be challenged. But when it's challenged, you must be able to stand up and say, like Peter, we ought to obey God rather than man. For us to make this stand like Peter, we have to choose God from before. We can't wait until the crisis comes. Peter did not wait until the crisis to know where he stood. Peter was proclaiming and preaching and teaching for God. He had already failed God already when he allowed the cock to crow twice and he denied Christ twice. He had already failed and he made a determination not to fail God again. So when he had determined in his heart to stand up for Jesus, stand up for what he believed in, when he was asked to not preach and to not teach, he says, listen, I already know where I stand. We ought to be God rather than man. We need to know where we stand. We must follow God now. We must obey God now. We must heed his voice now so that when the time of trouble comes, we will be able to stand. We must follow the Savior. Where so at my lot may be. Where the Savior goes, we will follow. Yes, my Lord, I follow thee. I follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and, and the old men should forsake thee. By thy grace, Lord, we will follow thee. I encourage you to follow the Lord. The first beast, the second beast, the mark of the the beast has all been explained in this series and I encourage you to make sure you follow the savior follow his word become a saint keep his commandments and have faith in jesus let us pray our heavenly father we thank you for your sure word of prophecy we thank you as things are being fulfilled right in front of our eyes Yes, it may seem like the freedoms that we have enjoyed will continue to be so. But if this pandemic has taught us anything, at a moment's notice, our freedoms, our liberties can be taken away from us. Help us to understand that while we still have time, we need to choose you. While we still have time, we need to follow you. While we still have time, we need to serve you. And if those who are watching, who are part of your remnant church, because they keep your commandments, they have the faith of Jesus, they are part of your remnant people, the seventh day of Venice church, we pray that they may remain true and faithful to your word. Not, not, it doesn't matter what the leaders want to do, what the presidents want to do, what the pastors want to do. It doesn't matter what the elders want to do. We need to remain true to you and keep our eyes steadfast on you and on your word. But those who are watching who are not a part of the remnant church, they may be a part of other denominations, may not recognize that they have only been following the, the commandments of men and laying aside the commandments of God, they have held to their own tradition, what them come bond, come see. But now that their eyes have been opened by your word, I pray that they will step out for you and accept your way, accept your word and reject the mark of the beast. No, 
before the time will come when it shall be in law and our freedoms shall be taken. And I pray for those who are not a part of any church. They are watching and they're listening, they're hearing this and they're wondering how come I've never heard this before. But Lord, now is the time when they hear your voice that it not harden their hearts. We pray that all of us will come to a saving relationship and knowledge of you, that your Holy Spirit will live in us and guide us into all truth. And when you shall recome, return and, and you will come and you will not tarry, that all of us will be ready to meet you and say, Lord, this is our God. We have long waited for it. We will enter into your rest. Help us to follow you. Though the heavens fall, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you need help, guidance, you can easily contact me. You can comment underneath this video. You can reach out to me. I'm available. Or find your nearest local Adventist church. But it's time, my friends, to serve the Lord. God bless you. Yeah.